Hey guys, if you want to go big, grab a set of my trolling flies and you'll find yourself holding up a big old 10 pound rainbow like this. Guess what? Hooked up on the Mickey Finn Marabou trolling fly. That is yellow with an orange back and uh, man, that fish absolutely crushed it. That was about two feet deep, about 108 feet behind the boat. And we are trolling along here at 1.9 miles an hour. It's an impressive strike. We'll see if it's an impressive fish. When they stay down like that, they're usually nice fish. Oh yeah, I can see some flashes down there. Not huge. Not huge, but he's a husky rainbow, that's for sure. Oh yeah, that's a nice quality trout. Beautiful fish. Though. Awesome. Putting up a tussle. Popped off nice. That's 17, 18 inches, maybe. Nice. I'd say that's real close to three pounds. That's a nice fish. Real nice fish. Yes. There you go, guys. Swing him over in the sun. Oh, there you go. Wow. Yeah, we can really see him now. What a beauty. Collins Lake, baby. Trolling fly by it. Doesn't get any better. Let him go. There he goes. There he goes. Show us that fly. It's really pretty right now. <laughs> yeah, it's a little torn up. <laughs> but yeah, that uh, that yellow fly just is a just a little uh, hair of orange in there. Just getting it done. So that's awesome. All right, let's get it back out there. We just hooked up on a trigger spoon, a full-size trigger spoon, down at about 20 feet. And uh, let's land this fish, and then I'll be coming back at you with some thoughts about prospecting. And uh, oh, that's a nice fish. I just saw him jump out there. I'll be back at you with some thoughts about prospecting and trying different lures, trying to establish different patterns. Um, and that's an ongoing process, especially when you're guiding. So let's see what Wes has got on here. That fish jumped a couple times. Here he comes. It's a bass. Bass. Okay. That still tells us something. I'll be coming back at you with some notes about that in just a bit. Let's talk about prospecting for trout and let's talk about the ever changing, you know, character of a trout bite. Um, I'm out here at Collins Lake. That's given me an opportunity to fish every day and really observe what's going on on the water. So for about, you know, two straight weeks, my micro turbo, couple beads, sometimes a bug, sometimes just a, uh, a small piece of threaded worm. This was absolutely dynamite, hands down, our best performing offering. But then that started to change and uh, these days, we are pulling flies near the surface and we are pulling threaded worms behind our willow leaf blades. We've tried pulling threaded worms behind our full size turbos, no luck whatsoever. But uh, right now we're running two surface, you know, near surface orange flies for large fish and we're running worms at six and 10 feet for, you know, numbers of fish. But we're aware that the bite you know, it's kind of ever changing. So we put our clients on limits this morning. We had 15 fish in the box by, you know, probably 11.30 or so, maybe 11.15. Um, so we went in, we took some lunch, and we came back out here to prospect and to figure out what may be going on with the bite. Now we have a fly and a worm in the mix. Those are our baselines, okay? And we're still getting hit on the worm and the fly. But we've been playing with our other two rods. We can run four rods. So we've been playing with our other two rods going through a bunch of different uh, offerings. We've tried trigger spoons, trigger spoon juniors. Um, we're trying grubs right now because at some point, the fly bite and the worm bite, it's gonna change. It's gonna change to something else. We've got the speed dialed at about 1.8. That's the speed that the fish seem to prefer right now. So we're kind of experimenting with different offerings to see where the bite's going. As of right this minute, nothing has changed. We've got one fish on the worm, we've got one fish on the fly, 
We haven't got anything on spoons other than a small bass and uh, we haven't done anything on the grubs either. But we'll keep playing with the bite. You know, it may switch. Next week it may be all about grubs or it may be all about pulling, you know, full-size trigger spoons. But the way that you stay on top of a bite, once you've got a bite established, is by running some rods with the tried and true stuff on them and then using your other rod or your other two rods if you're fishing with a partner to experiment, to run through, you know, a variety of baits. The speed you need to run at and the depth the fish are holding, that tends to change relatively slowly. But uh, they can change their preference of lures, colors, styles of lures, you know, overnight or even halfway through the day. So use two rods as your baseline, rods that you know are producing at depths you know are producing, and then run two other rods, or if you're fishing by yourself, one other rod, you know, in the same zone, but start playing with different baits. When the bite started to dry up on the on the micro turbo, um, we, we went to the full size night crawlers and started picking up fish. And it was kind of on a whim that I put on that orange fly. We're, we're pulling it 200 feet back, only about two feet deep. And so far in you know 48 hours, we've caught an 11 pounder and two five pounders on those orange flies, plus a bunch of three pounders and a whole bunch of smaller fish too. Those are kind of bonus fish for us. So remember, Trout bites change, and it's your job to keep, you know, stay on top of the bite, experiment, keep experimenting, and figure out where the bite is now and where the bite is going. And uh, that way, you're always going to be on the fish. And if you're on the fish, you're going to catch more and bigger fish throughout the course of the season. I'm Cal Kellogg. I'm signing off for now. If you're looking for trout gear, the gear you see me using and catching fish with here on the channel, go on over to fishhuntshoot.com. I want to thank you guys for all the support. If you're not a subscriber, take a second, hit that subscribe button. You'll always know when I'm on here talking about fishing strategy. And, uh, you know, beyond that, you have a great day. Wear your life jackets, and I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. Thanks for all the support, guys. I'm Cal Kellogg.